Happy Vapor. Welcome to my first video review of an e-smoking product. Uh, the product I've chosen is the Pure Smoker Icon. Ah, oh, that was me when I was young and naive, about six months ago. But I want to talk about the Pure Smoker Icon. A lot of people know that I actually won this as a raffle prize at the Vape Fest in Tamworth last October, October 2010. That's near as it six months ago. And, uh, well, five months ago, should I say. And this thing has never gone more than a day or two without me picking it back up again. It's probably my most used e-cig, uh, certainly my most used mod. We've had the tanks and various other gadgets like that. I've had the Vape Mate and the AVS3 and all sorts. But this is still definitely one of my favourite mods. And the reason I like it is it's not the size. It's a bit bulkier and a bit bigger than a, a Reaver or a Tornado. It uses cartonizers or atties just like any other mod I've got. It doesn't have the biggest battery of any one I've got, it takes a 14500, so I'd need a couple of those to get me through a day. But, I just like it, it's comfortable in the hand, it looks classy, I've got a, um, a Bose cartomizer on there at the moment, a black one that I peeled the label off just to make it look nice. And, um, and I do really like it, and I think it looks great. But it, as I say, it just feels comfortable in my hand. I like the way the switch operates. It never lets me down. It's just a great mod. So, when I heard that there was a switch upgrade available for it. At first, I wasn't particularly interested. And the reason I wasn't interested is the switch on mine is great. But being the sort that likes to mess with things, uh, must be a few weeks ago now, I splashed out for the, um, the uh, version 1.1 switch upgrade kit, uh, which I got from Cloud9 Cloud Vaping and I decided to fit it and see if it made any difference. So when my kit arrived, here it is in a little bag, I opened it up and inside I found a small Delrin piece, a little plastic sort of circular bit, a new spring a new washer and a couple of brass flathead screws. So I'm working now from the instructions on uh, Cloud9 Viping site, which you can probably see here. And you can probably see the instructions there, that's what I'm working to. So I thought what I'd do, and I've done this once before, and I've kind of put everything back the way it was, <laughs> so, uh, so I could do it again to demonstrate. I thought I'd go through the, uh, the fitting of the switch so you can see what's involved uh, to get the benefit. Um, now, one more thing to mention is, um, I, whilst I was uh, looking up the instructions earlier before filming this, I also read the manual. I did read that when I first got it. It's an online manual for the icon, also available through Cloud9 site. It's a PDF, I think. Um, and I just read it again a couple of hours ago now. And I noticed that um, in the kit that came with the original version one icon, there's a bit of Noah locks and some spare bits and bobs and all the rest of it. Um, and there were some tips in the PDF uh, online user guide on how to maintain it, and you're supposed to do things every couple of weeks, and what have you. Um, well, I've been using this for the best part of five months, and it's had some good use, and um, 
I never have. I've been a bit of a naughty boy. So what I thought I'd do is I'd, uh, <clears throat> I'd replace the switch, I'd do the upgrade, and, uh, and maybe do some of the maintenance that I'm supposed to have done as part of this. So, right. So I'm using a cartomizer as I say at the moment. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that and put it to one side. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble the whole icon, take out the battery. I'm using the AW IMR 14500s, uh, which have been great. Um, I may have already mentioned by the time you see this that I had one die on me the, the other day. Uh, I was gutted. I'm considering a burial for it. Uh, I'm going to unscrew the whole switch mechanism that we're going to work on. And that basically just leaves the steel tube, battery tube. So I'll just put that there. Right, now looking at the, the old switch mechanism, the, the spring will lift off very easily. And I think, yeah, I thought so. That's the same spring as is provided in the new kit, because the original uh, kit that came with it, you've got a choice of springs, one that's uh, fairly small uh, and one that's fairly large. And I was using the large, quite sort of uh, springy one. So now I'm going to follow the instructions. So remove the switch assembly from your device. Step two says remove the spring. Step three says use an Allen key or a pair of pliers to remove the nickel plated screw. And as you can see, that comes out like that. Uh, we'll put that over there. I don't think we're going to need that anymore. There's a little split washer. <coughs> I've been using it without any of the other washers uh, that were provided with the original kit. Um, so it was actually, there was quite a lot of travel in the switch when I pressed it. And I, I quite liked it that way. So now that though, comes into a few parts. Uh, I'll just show you this. You don't have to actually take it this bits apart for what I'm doing but I thought I might as well show you. You've got a nice hexagonal pin there and a hexagonal hole that that fits into and you can see that the when it's all working that's how the switch travels beautifully machined. I'm as impressed by this now as I was the first time I looked at it. It's definitely a quality item so uh, step three was to remove that um, that nickel plated screw with the pliers, so I did that. Step four, remove any washers, well I've done that also. Now step five is you take the new Delrin part it says, which is on this part here, with the curved side of it facing away from your original Delrin part and snap it into the original Delrin part. Okay, so this is actually kind of, uh, there's like a flat edge to it and then a rounded edge. So I guess that's what it means by curved. So you put the flat edge towards the new, the old Delrin part and they just sort of clip together quite snugly. There we go. So it almost looks like one piece now. They do fit rather snug. Number six, place the two Delrin parts back on top of the switch. There we go. I've done that, I'm gonna put this down. It's just a bit easier to do. Let everything move in event. Insert the brass screw, this is point number seven, with a flat head screwdriver into the hole and tighten it, so, so that looks like a flat head screwdriver. And pop that in there and screw that down. So 
So I won't do that too tightly. But what we've got now, as you can see, is the, the switch is now basically one unit again. The threaded part here will obviously fit, fit onto the tube and the switch then will move backwards and forwards. So the contact now, the old nickel plated screw has now been replaced with this brass screw. Um, I'll make sure I use the new spring that came with the kit. So uh, point number eight is replace the spring it says, but as I say I'll use the new one, I may as well. And that fits into around the new delrin bit into the old one, pretty much the way it was before. And that's it. It's ready to put back together. It says point number nine, screw the button assembly back into the tube. Um, uh, I'm not going to do that just yet because I'm going to apply a bit of Noah Lux. And then point number 10 is to test with your usual battery batteries in the device to ensure the assembly makes connection with the battery and that the button travel is to your liking. If no connection is made with the battery or you prefer a much shorter button travel distance, take the switch assembly apart again, this time adding a washer underneath the new Delrin part before snapping it into the original Delrin part. So that makes sense to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the little sample of Nolux that came with the original kit, which I believe is a Clang 9 edition rather than something that comes with all icons. If you're watching overseas, I don't, I'm not sure you get this with every icon, but I've got some. Uh, you're probably not supposed to use your fingers for this, but this is me. I'm just going to dab a bit on my finger and dab it on the threads. A bit on that thread and some on the thread around the top there. So I might as well slap it on there. There we go. I'll uh, just go and wash my hands. Now we're going to assemble the whole thing. So I'll start by putting the switch assembly back in. Excess now looks in there, so I'm gonna, gonna wipe that off. That's fine. And tighten the switch right up. Drop in my battery. And now I'm gonna put on the top cap. I can feel already that the uh, that's quite sort of powerfully sprung, but we'll see. Uh, let's see if it works and whether we need to make any adjustments, as it suggests in the instructions. Okay. Fingers crossed. So that's working just fine. Perfect. So I shall be taking that out with me on my little jaunt tomorrow. Um, I won't be using um, uh, cartomizer with it tomorrow. I don't think I'll probably be using uh, a low resistance atomizer, probably be a Cisco or something like that, maybe the Vape Mate. 
So that is how you fit the Pure Smoker Icon uh, version 1 to 1.1 switch upgrade. Um, and it's exactly the same kit and exactly the same process for the Prodigy if you want to go version 3 to 3.1. So the upgrade kit, if you want to do it, is £5.95 from Cloudvine. I hope that little instruction was, it, was of use. And it's back to me in the studio.